Designing custom furniture is both an art and a science. It's the marriage of creativity and functionality, craftsmanship and technology. In this video, we'll explore the essential steps for designing unique, meaningful pieces that are both functional and beautiful. Principles that apply to all forms of design. Every design begins with an idea, but how you express that idea can vary. Whether you choose traditional sketching, digital design software, or 3D modeling, your medium should feel comfortable and allow you to be expressive. I'm a big fan of computer-aided design tools, and coming from an architecture background, I use Rhino. But SketchUp, Fusion 360, AutoCAD, and countless others allow for precise control over shapes and dimensions. The key is to find a tool you like and keep at it so that you have an outlet to bring your vision to life. Good design starts with knowing what inspires you. Look at other pieces, reference designers, and explore different styles. Understanding what resonates with you is crucial. Shapes, materials, colors. There's nothing wrong with seeing something you like and riffing on it. It's a great way to actually pick up new techniques and approaches and has a big part in developing your design identity. Every project is unique. Yes, sometimes talking to your client is a bit like getting ready for a boxing match, but it's important to know their preferences, lifestyle, and the function the furniture needs to serve. Understanding the needs of your client is critical. What is the piece intended for? Who will use it? Is it for a home, office, or public space? A great design isn't just about aesthetics, it's about solving a problem. Furniture is a beautiful medium for design in this sense, as it has to work intimately at the human scale, as well as seamlessly fit into the life of its user. Every material has its own characteristics, strength, weight, texture, and how it reacts to different making processes. Understanding how your material behaves is vital for creating durable and functional furniture, and to not do so is in my opinion a missed opportunity for design. For example, wood is my material of choice and requires careful attention to grain direction and jointing techniques. However, metal can be sleek and industrial and can be welded and bent. Plastic is versatile and lightweight, potentially creating seamless organic forms. Or perhaps you like a hybrid of several materials. Understand the logic behind each material's use and it will enhance your design choices. Not everyone is blessed with a well-equipped dream workshop. Designing a custom piece means working within your technical constraints. Your choice of tools, machinery and techniques all play a role in what is possible to create. That's not to say the first question you need to ask is, can I do it? But rather, can I find a way to do it? There's normally a hundred different ways to accomplish the same thing in the making process. And if you have a limitation in something, you can always find a way to do it in a more approachable way. Understanding what's achievable with the tools you have and formulating a method for making will help prevent frustrations later and unlock the full potential of your making process. It's now time to design. I've worked in several world-renowned architecture offices and the real secret to succeeding in design is to explore as many options as feasibly possible. And that's because the first idea is rarely the best one. Create as many variations as you can. Try different proportions, materials, and assembly methods. Every iteration brings you closer to the perfect solution. Don't be too precious with your ideas and don't settle for the first idea. Push the boundaries and let your creativity flow. Good design can't be done in a vacuum. Peer review is an essential process where fresh perspectives come together to refine ideas, uncover hidden flaws, and elevate the overall quality of work that helps you see what you might have missed. This collaboration often leads to innovative solutions and stronger outcomes. Building a community you trust, no matter how big or small, fosters a dialogue. It encourages designers to ask questions like, how might different audiences perceive it? Are there elements that feel unclear or could be improved? And fundamentally, does this design achieve its intended purpose? Mm -hmm. 
since I opened my workshop, my process isn't just about drawing anymore, it's also about making. As you start constructing, you'll uncover new insights that may change your approach or improve the final product, because each time you make, you learn. And each time you learn, your making evolves. The feedback loop between making and designing is one of the greatest opportunities being a designer maker can offer. Stay flexible and use these insights to adjust and improve your design iteratively. Allow the making process to inform the design, making adjustments based on what you learn along the way. Achieving a well-rounded, holistic design means integrating all the previous steps so that the piece feels cohesive and complete. Good design doesn't just look nice, it tells a story. Try to think about what is your project's main driving concept and build on that through each design choice. Each element from the material to the joinery reflects the purpose, aesthetic and craftsmanship of the maker, as well as the identity of its user. Thank you for watching and please feel free to check out the build videos on this channel where I talk more in depth about my design thought process for each of my specific builds. And if you found this video useful, please like and subscribe. Thank you.